Benjo Kazooie. And hey, what's good? What it do? How you feeling? And Cody uh, as our guest, our special guest. Hey, it's me. And you always have me, Constable B, blasting in, real free, you know. And that's. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, yeah, I'm feeling the LCS to start off, eh? How are you feeling about LCS right now, Cody? What's your thoughts? What's your feelings? How am I feeling? Well, let me just say, pretty much all of the big names are playing as well as they should be playing. CLG's yeah, kicking ass with their new jungler. How, how do you feel about their new jungler being Dardock? I want to hear what you are I think he's a toxic piece of shit, but I like his ass. You also like double lift, and everybody knows he's a toxic piece of shit. I mean, you say that, but he can, like, back when he was super toxic, he'd back up his shit talk with actual play. Now he's just shitting on himself instead of others. <laughs> oh, man. You're not wrong. No. I'm Whereas not. Garduck, on the other hand, well, Garduck is popping up. Back up anything. No, yeah. now he's popping off, but back then. Uh, I think, but how do you feel about Immortals? Because that was Dardoch's last team. Immortals? Immortals now, with x Midi as their jungler, it's like when both teams switched junglers, their jungler started popping off. They came to a realization. Yeah, it's They're like, wait a minute, I suck with this team, but with this team, I, I think I'm just going to play like God. x Midi yeah. is now amazing, like he was ever on CLG. He was always a dead wave. Just like Dardock was on Immortals. I feel like the play style sit the, the, the players. Yeah. Because right? you have an much. aggressive early game jungler, what Xmissy was lacking on uh, impressive laners on CLG. And then on Immortals, they kind of play like a long con, sort of like more uh, in depth kind of macro game. Kind of like TSM. Kind of like TSM, yeah. Is Immortals a new TSM? No. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody's going to be the new TSM. C9 got pretty I, damn close, though. I don't even think that the new TSM is the new TSM. <laughs> no, they're not. I don't even know how I feel about them switching out Wild Turtle for Double Lift. Like, Double Lift's good, but some of the champions that he plays for this season, what you want. Yeah. Like, if he had a consistent Twitch, oof. The Varus, I feel, this season is very important. And the I feel Varus? Like Double Lift can't play it too well. No, he's not. He's not too good at Varus and Ash. He's more like, recently, he's been a Draven player, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's funny. Didn't he used to talk shit about Draven? Yes. Yes, he did. He talked shit about every champion, except for Vayne. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, right? Like, Ezreal's garbage. <laughs> uh, I think your Ezreal's garbage. I think my Ezreal's pretty bad. <laughs> but, I mean, to my credit, I didn't die to a Draven in lane. No, I'm pretty sure you did die to a Draven in lane. <laughs> no, I didn't. You did. <laughs> All right. Listen, that was I just a bad game. Back on, back on the, the, the they go on track. No, no flame, no flame, no flame. Dude, what the fuck happened to Arrow? <laughs> you remember Arrow? Where are you at? <laughs> I want to see this, this, this Korean looking motherfucker back the, in his prime. The number one ADC in, in NA, or he used to. He was considered the number one ADC. What happened, though, man? I don't know, dude. I feel like um, he's missing his Korean honeys too much. You know what I mean? The e-girls nope. here in NA aren't treating him well, huh? <laughs> he needs a little bit of that romance. Is that, is that what they need? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, you just feed, are. pretty sure you just feed them ramen noodles every day and they're happy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> no flame. No flame, so, no flame. No race. Do you do you like the current NALCS, or do you want to go back to uh, season two days back when good old my boy in the top lane, the good old hotshot GG coming in? Hotshot GG. 
Do you remember Back that? Dyrus used to play, and Dyrus wasn't trash. Back when Dyrus used to pop off on Rumble, what the fuck? Back when oh, Dyrus used to be able to play stuff like Jace. And do Back good. when he wouldn't go zero and sixteen in a fucking Challenger Series game. <laughs> no flame, no flame. Oh, man, what do you no think flame. about Delta Fox, though? Delta Fox? Oh shit. That's one with I'm a cutie pie, Scar oh, yeah. all of them, right? You know, the dream team, the meme team, the meme team. The meme team. I feel like on paper they're good, but it's mostly because of their past. Their past is quite impressive. Their past is quite out. impressive. Oh, yeah. I'm they a cutie a... pie. It's not bad. I'm a cutie pie right now. I think this uh, this meta shit like su suits him like a fucking blanket, dude. The gin? His gin is fucking spicy, dude. Coming from a gin main myself, I myself. Wait a minute. A I myself uh, am, am quite impressed by this man's gin, I will say. Oh, man, I can talk gonna, so much shit. Not, not, no flame. No flame. What is I'm a cute you saw my Penta. Yeah, you like saw my Penta. 10? 9 or 10? 9 or 10 from NA? Uh, I'm a cutie pie? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. uh, they're in Challenger series. No, I'm saying in solo queue. Why is he ranked? Oh, you know, that's a good question. I, I feel think like he's nine. I feel like he was ranked 4 for a while. Yeah, and then he dropped down. What's our host been up to? Oh, well. Will. What's our host been up to? I'm listening to you guys. Oh, William hasn't been uh, invested in League for quite a while. Oh, has he not? No. I'll play that's some what we're gonna after get this into. game, though. We're hey. gonna get. We're gonna get into that. After the stream. We're gonna get into why William hasn't played League in a while. <laughs> but overall, game. you're happy. You're happy with the current state of the LCS, and you like it. Yeah, I I enjoy the players. I enjoy the play styles. All the teams are doing pretty decent right now. Now with a few roster mm -hmm. changes, like with CLG and Immortal, and I feel like TSM's gonna pull out strong again, even though most people don't want that to happen. <laughs> I feel like anything can happen this season, which is scary. I feel like anything could happen. But after CLG, they went to that boot camp for a bit. They were like playing pretty poorly in the, Spring you know, show. the yeah. end, like around all that. And now that they've come back, they're stronger than ever. I feel like I feel like uh, Dardock is fitting well into the environment. Like the CLG's environment is like any other, is unlike any other because they are oh. a, a super like. They're um, very friendly team. Friendly, like, they're yeah. Friends. They're they're like. Uh, do you remember Rock Tigers? Yeah, I remember when they went against SKT in like season five. Back when they were known for just being like the friendliest, like just friend group. Oh yeah, they they had no flame, like legit no flame. Yeah, no flame, no flame. Yeah, they they were they were like what most teams would strive for, and I feel that like that is essential in a team. And now CLG's taking up the mat mantle, right? It so is. I feel that's like why. They, I feel like Nine under Aphromoo's I feel like under Aphromoo's guidance, he will turn Dardock into uh, he'll turn <laughs> Dardock's potential into a from a toxic uh, piece of shit who misses smites and a friendly puppy loving person. Yeah, I think this is the best thing for Dardock's career, you know? Cause I used to not like him as a player, but like seeing him play now and him on this team is giving me hope for the future of any solo queue junglers, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Before, I used to compare Dardock with Meteos. And, well, <laughs> most people don't want that. No, yeah. Like, I feel like um, <laughs> Meteos is garbage right now, though. <laughs> Let's talk about Phoenix 1 for a second. Oh, man. Oh. All right. Like poor old Meteos sitting there on the bench. What are they doing with Inori, dude? Inori has a lot of potential, too. Wasn't there something going on with Inori, though? Maybe, he, maybe, yeah, didn't he have, like, this weird-ass, like, family thing? Where, like, yeah. he to a hospital? This weird-ass family thing. Gotta love it. Yeah. Gotta love players with family problems. 
Yeah, you can't play LCS for family. Bro. Remember Salushi? Salushi on teammate? The same thing happened to that guy. You don't see him around anymore. Family <laughs> no, problems. reasons, yeah. Family problems. Well, even Stixie on CLG, he was sick and he still he yeah, played he poorly. Still played, didn't he? But he was dude. still there. Oh, yeah. Stixie's a man, dude. Let's talk about Stixie's, Stixie's mechanics for a second because I remember you telling me. Uh, a while ago, that you thought that Stixie was the best uh, AD carry in NA. And honestly, I'll stick with that statement. Stixie has proven time and time again that he can consistently be good, except for when he's sick. When he's sick and they... <laughs> <laughs> and he plays like, poorly. That's like Bjergsen too, right? Like, you can't expect Bjergsen to play well when he's sick. I mean, no. I, like, I expect it, <laughs> but like, you can't really. Don't worry, most bronze people do. Yeah, 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 yeah. No flame. Except I'm not bronze though. Wait a minute. Hey. Um, yeah. I mean, what do you feel about High? High? Mm. Do you think he's a dead meme? Do you think what? Do you think he's a dead meme? Or do you a think dead meme? Yeah, pretty much. Or do you think that? High was on fly quest, on? right? Yeah, he's on FlyQuest. They're not doing the best right now. I think FlyQuest in general is a dead meme. Dude, get balls out of the top lane already. <laughs> like, it's embarrassing. I think I'd rather see Dardoch play as their top laner than balls. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, Dyrock. wrap it up. We gotta move on to E3 news. Hey, let's move on to E3. Hey, let's do it. Overall, League is great. LCS is pretty good. LCS okay. League is mad. Dota is where it's at. Let's start watching. Let's, start a, Dota, let's, <laughs> let's a start a Dota portion of the podcast. Dota Fuck 2? It. Yes. No, Dota 1, actually. <laughs> no, I'm Dude. kidding. Of course, Dota 2. Okay. Anyways, so. E3 happened late, lately. Pretty... I don't know how far back exactly, but not, not too far back. And PSOR... PS PSR, yes. PS4. Yes, the PSR. PS4 came out with a bunch of stuff. Namely God of War, a new one with this one's sort of like a father son edition, sort of in the same let's style talk about as that Last of because, Us. Let's talk about that because God of War like the God of War that I remember is a PSP game. Right? Yeah. And it, yeah. it started off on the PlayStation, but I remember the best God of War games were on fucking PSCP, right? The old and you PlayStation would bring that with you, and you'd scare your grandma with it. And you'd be <laughs> like, hey, grandma, come here and look at me fuck up these nerds on God of War. And she'd be like, oh, sonny, no. Don't play that, that. Is that what your grandma used to say? Yeah, now she's dead, though. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, that's, okay. <laughs> Please... Okay. All right. No, but like I'm, I'm digging the father son thing. I feel like he's, I feel like God of War dad would be kind of like my dad. RL, get me drunk and smoke weed with me in the fucking, in the middle of the woods, and I'd be like, hey. Hey, thanks, and dad. Me, and then beat me. <laughs> and then beat you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving on to the next game. Unless you have anything to say on the topic of God of War. Uh, I saw the trailers for it. It I was talking good. to Cody. No, I don't have anything to say about that. I'm not very big on God of War. It looks pretty good. There's a new Uncharted it's... coming out with, uh, it's in, it's involving Chloe and her friend. I don't know her friend's name Are yet. Are they gonna have lesbian sex? Wait a minute. God, I hope so. Um. <laughs> that would be nice. I mean, I'm hoping, right? You can I'm only hope for it. Yeah. If there's uh, hope, there's a way. And if there's a way, then there's, there's a gay. A gay. If there's a way, there's what? a gay. <laughs> there's a way, there's, there's a gay. Gay I'm lesbian just hoping sex. That, I'm just hoping that they don't fuck it up. I feel like the last Uncharted game was sort of fucked up. I don't know. The Uncharted's if they released, pretty solid. Yeah, the new Uncharted one was pretty damn good. If they released the game on PC, I feel like I'd play it, though. Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah, I can I mean. vibe with that. Um, Days Gone. Now this is a pretty open. This is an open world left like zombie style game. It's single player. 
And this looks really interesting. It's kind of like Left 4 Dead with a story. Which is very interesting. The way your environment mixes with the zombies and how you can like basically flood enemy settlements with zombies and do all kinds of other stuff to save your friend which was William place is it a... like uh, is it like that game that you played with Michael what game Michael uh, Michael Valentine what game exactly are you talking about it was like a game where you would like build forts and it was laggy and glitchy as hell miscreated yeah or I'm talking Daisy? about the one where you it was like a Daisy ripoff clone, where um. Well, every game that's like this nowadays is a Daisy ripoff clone. <laughs> no, it's really that. Daisy did I, it first. I just feel like this genre is oversaturated and full of garbage. It's I would say oversaturated, but not full with garbage. How many more? Like, wasn't H one Z one supposed to be another ripoff clone, and then they removed the zombies? I don't know why they did that. I feel like. Because they wanted to be a PvP game, not a PV zombie game. Yeah, but zombies are sweet. Yeah, but it's oversaturated, dude. Yeah, okay. True. Well, anyways, Horizon Zero Dawn, now I've never played it. But they're coming out with new DLC called The Frozen Wild, which looks pretty cool. Robots with ice. Robots with ice. Yeah. Sounds good. Monster Hunter ice. is coming out. Oh, sorry, did you have something to say on that? No? No. Okay. Uh, Monster Hunter World is coming out, which looks fucking phenomenal. Like, really good. I've never played a Monster Hunter, but I can is say that. Is it going to be on the Switch? I don't know. I, it might. Um, it should, isn't Nintendo like a Monster Hunter platform? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It should be on the Switch then. Yeah. It depends. I don't know. Maybe it's too too um, like graphic intensive for the Switch, but who knows? Um, yeah. So Monster Hunter World looks awesome, and I definitely want to play it at least at some point. Spider Man, the new one, is coming out, and that looks fucking cool. It looks like they're giving it the Batman treatment. True. The Batman treatment. Have you not seen the trailer for it? It's so sick. I have seen the trailer for Spider-Man. I just don't want it to be fucked up. <laughs> I don't I think it will be. I don't think it will be. I hope it's good. I mean, it looks good, but that's a trailer, and they can do anything they want with trailers. Yeah, that's true. All right. Detroit Become Human. Now, this is about a droid that has sort of gained self-awareness. <laughs> and gives other droids self-awareness through this touch. That this, sounds super gay. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's sort of what, like a heavy rain style like? game where you choose your own adventure. Is it like yeah. AIDS, but robot AIDS? No, 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 no. Have you not seen the trailer for that one either? No, no. I'll, I'll link it to you. It's actually incredible looking. Is it like um? Is it like those uh, adventure games where you? kind of go through it and it's like a story yes yes I, I can i can fuck with those dude you would absolutely fuck with this hold on i'm saying that. i'm not gonna watch it on the stream let's move on to the next topic yeah <laughs> i know that I'm back so back oh, too is it actually a thing <laughs> back too <laughs> wait a minute so this garbage fucking game Got a it's sequel. Getting a sequel? <laughs> it's getting a it's sequel. It's because Donkey pushes it so hard. <laughs> because of Donkey, I think. Yeah. Oh my god. I wonder if Donkey actually got copies sold of that. Probably. Probably. That was such a garbage game. But hey, maybe the second one will be good. Who knows? It looks pretty <laughs> sweet. Don't try to fool yourself. Don't try to fool yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, that nails it for the PS4 segment of the of talk the about e3 news xbox trash no we're talking about bethesda oh xbox good old bethesda trash. way yeah. before their time evil within two now i played evil within one it was like resident evil 4 but uh interesting in how it 
played. Very like. Very shitty. What? It would jump. You're you basically you're in the mind of someone else in that game, so you just jump around like a you jump around worlds like a fucking rabbit. Like it's you're going down. You're going. It goes nuts. Yeah. So I'm hoping I mean, it's, it's similar or doesn't take that same aspect as it does in this one because it's really confusing for the story. But at the same time, confusing stories make sometimes great games. So that's okay. Like Metal Gear Solid's confusing as fuck, but like it's <laughs> still a good game. Turn um, down the uh, music. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I felt like. Like, it, it, I feel like it was very repetitive. If that makes sense. The game was very um, repetitive. And then the plot twists weren't even that great. Yeah. Because you kind of pick up on it throughout the game. You're like, all right. This has, like, I feel like this game revolves around the same premise that every other game that tries to fuck with you does. Where it's like, is it a dream? Yeah, it's a dream. Obviously, it's a dream. Because, this game has been played before and it was called Resident Evil 7. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, I mean, Bethesda hasn't impressed me recently. Oh, um, before we move on to continue on Bethesda, there's a new Call of Cthulhu game coming out, which I just wanted to speak on because, uh, Call of Cthulhu was a game I played a little bit of, <laughs> and I'm really excited because it's like you see Is Cthulhu and you go crazy. <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's it's like an adventure game, but you're like an investigator sort of, and it's like oh, is it like that old game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it. Yeah, I watched um, PewDiePie play that one. Yeah, that it was, was it was very old. spooky, very spooky indeed, and. Anyways, can, moving on, I just wanted to speak on that for a second because I'm very excited for that. Uh, new Dishonored. Yeah. New Dishonored. Dishonored. Death I like Dishonored. Dishonored. Alright, yeah. Bethesda did a alright deal thing with Dishonored, let's be real here. I mean, yeah. very glitchy game, very cool concept. Yeah, the concept is really cool. Very Bioshock-esque. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like... Um, I feel like I like any game where you can just decide if you want to be a jackass or, or a fucking <laughs> a, a good guy. You know no, what I mean? You, it's actually hard to be a jackass. good guy in Dishonored, though. Because, oh yeah, it's so hard. Because you have to stealth your way through it and like not kill anyone, and that is so fucking hard in that game. I it's hard until that. you realize you can blink around and like no one notices because the AI was so shitty. Yeah, you have to know the blink spots. And, like, once you know the blink spots, you can just zip around like nothing. Honestly, Dishonored was the first game I ever got, like, that I rented. And I actually liked. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know how, like, you rent games and you're like, I wonder if I'm going to like this. And then you actually end up liking it and it's a surprise. That was the first game. That was your first I, one. Yeah, I, I didn't like any other game. Wow. Yeah, any other game that I rented, I never liked it. <clears throat> well, remember when Blockbuster was the thing, boys? Holy, oh, rest in peace. Yeah. Hit him with the Blockbuster meme. Hit him with the Blockbuster. All Just right. got uh, moving on. A bunch of VR games are coming out, which is kind of. I just expected. Did you order an happen. Oculus Rift? Did not. Did I order one? I thought you would talk about that once. You were like, I'm going to get an Oculus Rift. And I was like, sure, you no, want that? No, I want to get a Vive. Yeah. I thought about getting a... When the Oculus wasn't a piece of shit, I thought about it too. I was like, hey, this could be like the future of gaming. And then I realized that the future of gaming was connected to Facebook. And then I was like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, please don't. Facebook, if you ever touch my games again, I'm going to fucking cut your throat. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Facebook has come out with some great games. Farmville. Farmville, though. Remember when you used to f send pokes in Facebook and be like, hey, baby, poke me? Remember that? I feel like you only put girls. You did. <laughs> I did. 
I used to poke my friends. Is that weird? I didn't poke you. I think no, you I... tried to poke me once and I ignored you. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I hit this last ignore on your stupid ass. Yeah. Alright. So, VR games, Doom's getting VR, Skyrim's getting VR, and... Have you guys played any VR games? No, but I've seen a lot of VR porn. Does that count? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> what about and... you? What have you played? No, not. I've played a little VR game on my friend's uh, like phone VR thing, and it was like you shot zombies, and it was pretty. It was pretty all right, but like I did it while driving. Like, I wasn't driving, he was driving, and I did it while I was in the car, and it was pretty fucked. <laughs> like, the bumps on the road would fuck it up and everything, it's whatever. But it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, moving on. Elder Scrolls Online is getting some DLC, which looks... Oh, Morrowind. A game that nobody plays. Wait a second. Not Morrowind, Elder Scrolls Online. Oh. The mobile, not... Uh, not the mobile, the MMO. Yeah, nobody plays this game well. No one cares. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Wolfenstein 2, which looks fucking amazing. I'm so excited for this game. Are you ready for the plot twist where there were never Nazis? And it's all a dream? <laughs> and it's all a dream. Because that's what Evil Within 2 is going to be like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wait to find out that this is all a dream. Yeah. I want a way to get my fucking $60 refund. Uh, I don't think anybody's getting a refund. <laughs> oh no. How does that even work, by the way, on Steam? Is you have to like play less than an hour over the game? Yeah, there's a time limit. Oh. Um, you can't just like play through a whole game. That's and the like, problem with. Sh limit. That's the problem with shitty dream games is that it's all a dream. It, it's like, it's all real until like two hours in and it's a dream so then they can't get a refund yeah they don't they don't tell you immediately it's all a dream they want to wait they want to wait to go and they want you to be like oh wow this is a great game i can't wait wait a minute it's... yeah and by that point they're like huh. but we'll find wolfenstein 2 goes on a concept that no one's ever done before which is nazi zombies wait a minute Dude, that's zombies. unheard of hey there's there's a there's great content in that game. Yeah, the content's called shooting, and the premise is in front of you. Yeah. While running. Yeah. 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 Hey, it's done better than anyone else has done it in a while. <laughs> That's including Call of Duty. Yes. Yeah, Call of Duty's kind of. Did you ever see those videos of Call of Duty where they would just like play through the game without shooting at all because it was so easy? Yeah, back when Call of Duty was a thing. I remember watching those videos. Back when it was important. Back when, back when I was MLG. Wait a minute, when was that? I don't know, when I was like six. <laughs> I feel like Call of Duty needs to actually get their shit together. Like, uh, what is it called? Like, They, they are, World that World new World, World, World of War or whatever? Well, yeah. They're actually they're actually pulling their shit together on that one. How long does it take? Like seven years? How many Call of Duty games have been absolute shit and in the future? Too too many. <laughs> too many, dude. Hey guys, this time we have laser guns. Hey guys, this time we have laser guns with scopes on them. Hey guys, this guys, time our this laser time guns. We have robots. This time you play as a robot. This time there's just yeah. nobody. It's all just robots. Yeah. This time, this time you can slide on the ground. <laughs> this time we're just copying Titanfall too. Yeah. Oh my God, I hate Call of Duty developers. Every year it's the same garbage. And you think that maybe like with their engine, because I feel like their engine's pretty good, that with their engine they could actually pull together a decent story. No, it's always Private Miller, Private Soap, some reincarnation of their stupid ass. Doing private the soap. Same don't don't you dare talk oh, crap about private soap. All right, I'm sorry, private soap. I love you. <laughs> it's like the one good character in any of those games. I mean, I like Black Ops story. Mason, the numbers. 
The numbers, Mason. 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 The number, num Mason. The numbers, Mason. The numbers. What were the numbers? What are the numbers? Mason's mean, just Mason. like, I don't know where I am. I'm tied down. I'm going to break out. Now I'm going to run away. I'm going to black out, and then I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to be in the back of a truck. <laughs> Screw you, Mom and Dad. I'm running away from home. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm fucking Mason. You're fucking Mason? I'm fucking Mason in the ass, as we speak. Well, wow. I just got meta. I just got very meta. Anyways, Whoa, moving we? on. Xbox One X. Yay. Oh, a way out prison co-op. Yeah. Can't wait for this top-down prison co-op game. It's not top-down, <laughs> but oh. it looks pretty cool. Um, I love, like the top-downs. It's from the guys who made A Tale of Two Brothers, I think. Oh, that was a good game. All right, maybe you have my interest. Yeah. Yeah. Keep talking. Sell me this Keep game. Keep talking. Well, I don't know much more about it. It was just a trailer, but um... all right. Now you've lost my interest. I'm not going to. You, uh, you got it, and you lost it. You're the well, worst person in the world. It looks like a good story. It's not selling like me at all. A fun story about breaking out of prison. Yep. You think breaking out of prison is an easy thing to do? Well, do you think your life is a fantasy? I don't think so. I think this video game is a fantasy about me breaking into prison, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Battlefront 2. No flame. Ba no flame. Battlefront 2 looks good. Better better than Battlefront 1, which was shit. <laughs> which was absolute dog shit. Yeah. And that's all it really needs to say about it. There was like fuck. A one thing where like you could find like a Ewok, right? And everyone freaked out about it on the internet. I mean, Ewok? You had to... You Even though they like... should have been playable from the beginning, they should have been yeah. playable. You should have been able to play as Ewoks and throw the damn spears and do whatever, but no. Did you know that George Lucas hates, or not not George Lucas, the fucking Han Solo hated Ewoks because he, he like thought it was like family friendly. And that's why they made Ewoks, because they were family friendly. Well, And they wanted to sell toys to children. Well, and I'm not surprised by that, but I still love the Ewoks because they're cute and adorable. Me too. I want to you walk. And they're badass too. They're a badass little guys. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you be able to play with as an Ewok? <laughs> like, what the fuck? I feel like EA is just taking a massive dump on Star Wars. Yeah, they are. <laughs> it seems like it. And how the fuck yeah. did they even get the rights to this game anyway? Money. I think Money. George Lucas just George Lucas was like, "Oh, you guys make FIFA, right?" I mean, so does Disney. I'm pretty sure he's just selling out Star Wars to anybody that wants it. Yeah, Disney bought it for quite a bit, though. Let's be real. <laughs> Let's be real. Disney bought that shit so fast. Alright, moving on to the... What's the next thing? To Microsoft. Microsoft? It's the Xbox oh One X. Now this, I, now, this looks like a pretty good system will Although i be able to expensive. play mega man x on my xbox one x yeah it's expensive and play some sonic x and play some um, x, capcom, x, xbox capcom, one x. capcom marvel marvel uh dc x. alliance x on this uh x system the only games that you'll be able to play are x's yeah <laughs> supersonic dx so I'm just going to blow through these pretty quickly because we're taking a lot of time on E3. Assassin's Creed Origins looks cool, although it's just another Assassin's Creed. Don't it's talk shit about Assassin's Creed, my friend, because they are doing their story better than Call of Duty is. Yeah, that's true. And they're releasing a game every yeah, that's year. That's not really that hard to do. True, but yeah, like, I mean, think hard. about it. I got to give my boys at Ubisoft some love because they have a, a studio in Montreal. So, Canada... Suck my dick. You want Canada to um, suck your dick? Anyways, no, yeah, Canada, Canada should dick. suck your dick. Yes. Just as a whole. Everybody in Canada start sucking Ben's dick right now. Please. I'm desperate. <laughs> oh, we already know that. Well, backwards anyways, compatibility. Anyways, anyways, backwards compatibility for the Xbox One as well. Which should have been in the Xbox One from the beginning. Should have been. Because they promised it like 50 fucking times. Yeah, uh, Forza 7 looks really pretty. Uh, I'm not really a racing guy, but 
four to seven. Neither is anybody else, Will. <laughs> yeah. Metro, no, no. The new Metro looks so fucking impressive. Like, right, so yeah. pretty. That, oh. I mean, rats that look like bears, I'm down. Rats that look like bears? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Bear rats? Bear? New PUBG Zero? on Xbox One. That's in... That's <laughs> It's going to have a rank mode, there's going to be a new gun, uh, the P90, there's going to be uh, jumping through windows and stuff. Why? Because, don't you think if you were given the opportunity to jump through a window and you had to do it to save your life, you would do it? I would jump through a window. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Xbox One's looking really good. Yeah. Deep Rock. Galactic, which is like Minecraft updated for the new age, which looks pretty all right. Uh, State of Decay is getting a new a sequel, which looks pretty all right. Beyond Good and Evil looks fucking awesome, and I think everyone's gonna want to play that one. And then <sighs> Anthem, which is like Destiny, but like you're more powerful and you can fly around. Is really cool looking. Um, as far as Eve's three is concerned, we're almost done. Just one last thing: Digital Extreme. Now they did a press conference, but they didn't really release any new games. They just made like an art piece. I don't want to spoil it for anyone watching the stream. Can we? Can someone mute the stream? Because I can hear myself. That's fucked. Yeah, Cody's yeah, mic is uh, I don't know if that's me. It is. I don't even know. have. Put, put on push to talk, Cody. Oh, is that a thing? Yes. Just just mute the stream because you can hear us right now. Yeah, I'm muted the stream. Can you hear it right now? No, no I can't no, hear it. Good. You're good. Um, All right. Yeah, so Digital Extreme has a new art piece and it was fucking. It's fucking hilarious. Like, it's really good, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone. It just gets really crazy as far as press conferences go and deserves your attention because not many people have the balls to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And it's just really unique, and that's cool. E3 is, like, one of the, like, E3 is like one of the conventions that people actually pay attention to, so. Okay. Moving on to the Futurology segment, my favorite segment. I love this segment. It's so cool. You're like um, the only person that does. <laughs> Let's you. see the links. Let's see the links that you have here. So you water age splitting. researchers report new, more efficient catalysts for water splitting. What is that? Because you, you produce hydrogen from water. That's what splitting it means. So they um, want to make more bombs. <laughs> no. Is that what they're saying? University of Houston is... physicists have discovered a catalyst that can split water into hydrogen and oxygen, composed of easily available low cost materials, and operating far more efficiently than previous catalysts. That would solve one of the primary hurdles remaining in using water to produce hydrogen, one of the most promising sources of clean energy. So, you know, this is a good thing. This is a very good thing. Science is working hard. It's hard at work for us. Uh, moving on to the next one. The retirement age is going to be at least 70 soon because of the fact that in rich countries by 2050, life expectancy, life expectancy rises above 100. So it's going to be rising to reflect that. And it's going to be really cool because you can work longer. Yay, work. Fuck that. I don't want to work more, dude. Fuck my ass. It's five years to save for retirement. It's five more years. That's no problem. I mean, Most I'm going to be like working. Brand. I feel like when I'm going to be 70 years old, though, I want to be sitting on my couch, not doing jack shit and smoking the blunt. Like you do now. Yeah. I don't well, want to You might be work. able to. You could probably retire a little early, depending on your job. <sighs> I mean... Weed's gonna be legal soon, so I feel like I'm gonna need it. Yeah. 
robot police will start tr patrolling in Dubai. So they already Dubai. have one. Yeah, they already have one, and it's he roams around the mall. I don't think he has a gun. Does yet. he hit people in the fucking head like I, Jackie Chan? I think he, like, he's roams around Cassie with other police. human police officers. So I think what's going to happen eventually is that there's going to be the world's first robot police officer officially yeah, reported for duty. I'm going to bring a video up on at the Dubai thing. Mall in the United Arab Emirates on Tuesday. All right. The new robot was seen zooming around the world's robot largest police. mall, assisting Does that shoppers mean that they with have a payment of fines, as well as giving Probably. them directions Probably. and showering them with compliments. The high-tech police oh my officer God, that unveiled at the Gitex Technology Conference the robot in 2015 the, yeah, the features head, a touchscreen so menu on his torso so that mall visitors can easily scroll through items and find what they need. In case of emergency, okay, dude, Dubai Dubai already robot, up, robot like, officer robot can connect police? visitors directly to like police that. via live chat. So it doesn't have like a weapon or anything. It just sort of connects you to the actual police. So it's worthless. So I wouldn't say it's worthless as much as it's, it's a prototype, you know. It's trying to it's trying to bring the future to Dubai as far as because eventually police officers aren't going to exist. We're just going to have robots. who are just going to arrest you. But and this is that, except in its prototype stage, cases. I'd say. It when gives not you, complimenting like, shoppers, this charming robot stuff. is out scanning the sea of faces, um, looking for criminals. It seems too expensive and retarded. Sometimes yeah, I feel like real police officers get the job done a lot better. Uh, police <laughs> Why does he have a touchscreen? <laughs> Just in case you want to look for stuff so or ask him a question. If he or if you want to touch him. In the face. Or if you want to touch him. What happens if you Is that considered police brutality if you punch the robot police? That screen is flipping out. Really Do you see this, Cody? The screen is flipping. I'm about to look at it. Would you feel safer Wait a second. if you had a robot police officer patrolling your malls first time and airports? A robot police dick. That touch screen is flipping the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Jesus so, yeah. Christ! This this is it's doing the Sieg Hail. It's news. doing the Sieg Hail from Hitler. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is probably the most interesting news. An artificial intelligence developed its own non-human language. So Facebook designed chatbots to negotiate with one another, and the bots made up their own way of communicating. Once, um, once English wasn't working as well as they liked. Which is cool. This could be the future of language. We could have a more efficient way of talking to each other. That isn't necessarily uh, word-wise. It's probably mathematical in some sort of way. Still, really interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, futurology seems like the best segment we've ever had. We should get to see a fucking goddamn robo dick you got a robo dick all right moving on to youtube news instagram model christina burns talked a lot christian of shit burns. christian burns man oh right christian this burns. man child talked a lot of shit to a security guard at vidcon for not letting him get into the event christian proceeded to boast his follower count and called the guard blue collar as fuck and ugly is VidCon a cesspool of shitters, or is there anything redeeming to it? It's a pretty, no. it's it's a little bit of a cesspool, but I feel not like shitters entirely. I feel like there's a reason why VidCon tickets are so low in cost, right? It's meant for the little kids to go there and take pictures with PewDiePie. Yeah, for the most part. And uh, but like just the fact that like this. This guy walks up to one of the, like, private security guys that they have hired for, um, VidCon, right? He walks up to them, gets mad at them to, that, over the fact that, uh, they don't have, um, they're not allowed to get into the event. So, he starts boasting about how much money he, he made. 
Yeah, the Christian Burns is a dick. Huge like, dick. There's, it was no reason for it. And then, like, he then goes on to, like, Keemstar's YouTube channel, and he's like, Yeah, man, I didn't mean to do it. Um, man, like, I guess I was just really heated because they wouldn't let me on a VidCon. You know? And then it's like, this kid is, like, so fucked up. Like, just think about how easy he had, he's had life to think that people need to, like, bend over and show them, show them, like, absolute gratitude to even be in his presence, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's what happens when you get so much of a following at such a young age, it goes to your head. Yeah. Straight to your head. I have a question about clickbait. Um, you guys see the picture on the Google Doc, right? Yes. Let me give you some background on Lance Stewart. Lance Stewart is this vlogger that takes pictures, provocative pictures of his girlfriend and puts them on his titles. Right? And none of them are true. None of it actually happens. My question is, would you smash his girlfriend and why do you think that it's bad for him to use his girlfriend for views? I think the question you're looking for is she attractive or not? Which she is. Yeah. She is. But You think so? She has no eyebrows. She's still attractive. Like, she looks like a ghost. It, it's kind of fucked up the way he uses his girlfriend for views. It's really fucked up. It's like similar to how Daddy of Five used his kid's abuse for views. It's kind of fucked up, honestly. Does anyone else think it's not fucked up, or are we pretty much all in agreement here? I'm in agreement with that. Like, there's no reason to use your girlfriend that way, dude. Yeah, he, he, it sounds like he's getting desperate. He's making a lot of money off of it, though. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, if she doesn't mind it, but I don't feel like she's in the right headspace to mind it in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe he's just like, babe, please let me use your body. Please. I just, I just need to make money for us. Please. And she's like, fine. Or something like that. I don't know. Most of his thumbnails is his girlfriend with her top off. Right. So. Uh, moving on. Cody, are you ready for the interview? Yeah, am I ready? Shoot. You know what you should do? You should put on push to talk, dude. Okay. You just... I mean, you're in game right now. But, like... <laughs> just hit me. Huh? Just hit me with the question. Cody, Wait. are you boosted? Or no? I might as well be. I mean, Maybe like, season I 4 I was, like, a god, but now I'm just... Cody, mediocre. what's your background with League of Legends? Give me your, like, lowdown. In the high down. Like the whole story? Yeah. Let's see. I started League Season 2. The end of Season 2 and Ari came out. Because I was like, dude, the fucking champion's awesome. Hot ass fucking bitch. Like, why would you not just play Ari? So I started playing Ari. I was like, dude, this is great. And then I watched Aframu playing LCS. And I was like, dude, support's fucking amazing why don't i just play support fuck Ari. so i started playing support i was pretty bad at it and then i found the almighty box box and then you became a faggot roommate and made it to masters on that i sure did i made it to <laughs> masters playing only ribbon and you know, that was season four. I made it to Masteries. I was pretty proud of myself. And, uh, I just lost because I climbed as high as I wanted to. I'm not good enough for Challenger. I know that much. So when I got to Masters, I was just like, all right, this is where this is what I'll peak at. So I stopped playing. And, you know, I just fucked around a bit. Played on Smurfs. Stopped playing Riven. Became a support mate again because of the... Uh, Afro Moo. Because why would you not play support when you watch Afro Moo? Fucking support's easy, am I right? 
<laughs> so, uh... Yeah. yeah, I think I was yelling that in the game the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're so bad at support. Morgan is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Did so, uh, you just say Morgan you know, is hard? What are your current feelings on the state of League of Legends? Do you feel like the constant release of Broken Champions or reworks is toxic or beneficial um, to the game? I feel like they could do better with the backstories of Champions. Like, they did really well with What's their faces? Rakan and Zaya. Like when they released Zaya and Rakan, it was like clearly just lovers and one's a protector, the guy. And he's a support, so like it all makes sense, everything's perfect. But like then you look at champions that were released before that, it's like Ivor, and it's like, wait a minute. What the fuck is a tree? You're a fucking you're Groot. Like what the hell's your backstory? There is no backstory. You're just a fucking tree. Not even a cool tree either. He just gives you shields. Like, what yeah, are you just like, like, hey, so I'm broken. a protective tree that's actually a psychopath. He's you so know? broken, dude. He, he is broken. Just... I, I'll give you that. Like, and then Bard. Like, who the fuck is Bard? Wait a minute. Pretty sure Bard demoted me to Diamond. Pretty sure that no. Bard has no backstory and is just a meat loving motherfucker. <laughs> He's just a meat You're not wrong. Man. So, all right, you're, so you're liking the current, like, rework schedule that they have? The what? You oh, like the how champions they're are reworking? Yeah. Like, Evelyn, I think Aatrox again, Urgot. I'm actually low-key hyped for the Urgot re rework. Me too, actually. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I feel like um, they can do something really cool. I mean, did you see the leaks with the shotgun knees? Yeah, the shotgun oh, legs, that's pretty awesome. Like, what the hell is a shotgun leg, dude? I'm scared. Yeah, I don't even know. All right. Like, looks cool. Uh, yeah, so you're not against it. Because one of the things that Will said recently, and I'm, I know I'm going to bring this up, Will, is that these champions are too overpowered, and every day they release a new champion, and I just can't keep up with it. William is a casual player, as you can tell. Okay, listen, buddy. I said that they release champions too fast to balance them. That's that's what I said. I didn't say every day. You're taking my words out of context. But still similar to what you said, yes. So let me give you some background on Will Cody, right? And this, this interview is to help Will be given a better player because he is a normie. All right. So William used to be gold in season three. Mhm. Mm now he's boosted ass trash. Is he bronze? Yes. I don't William. play enough to rank up. William always complains, saying that he's the best person on his team. William no, always I is like, say that. I I carried with uh, what you say you carried with the other day. Leona Jungle. <laughs> I'm carried with Leona Jungle in my ranked games, and I deserve a higher ELO. No, I never said that. It wasn't in a ranked game. It was in a normal. I wouldn't so play Cody. Leona Jungle in ranked. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, do you have any advice for Will? Uh, what what is your main role? Jungle? Yeah. Just play a. Uh, honestly. What you are you now? Bronze? Yeah. Um, uh, hmm. You want to win games. Just play, like, hardcore damage champions. Not Leona Jungle, that's for sure. But, like, <laughs> Graves or Master Yi. Something with wave clear and good ganking ability. Maybe not Master Yi. Master Yi is, like, pretty, pretty rough, really. If you don't know how to play him. Mm -hmm. But, like, great. Graves is a great jungler. You can wave clear, you can push turrets, you can take objectives, you can do whatever, you can gank whatever level you want to. The okay. jungle clear is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what you want to do. Don't ever play bot lane. If you want to climb, don't play bot lane. Just, just wait till you get to a higher E little play. Yeah. Don't fuck with the bot lane. Tree bot lane, like, uh, like Assassin's Tree bot lane. Just there for kills. That's all they're there for. Just kills. 
I like to get bot lane early. I like to get a lot of ganks in on them early though, because then you get dragon control. Mm. Even though it's hard to gank bot, bot is like the hardest lane to gank, I'd say. Yeah, mid lane has a bunch of openings, and top lane is usually always pushed. Yeah. Because every top laner thinks that they uh, they have to push to win. All right, Cody. All right. All right. That's some good advice for my friend Will here. What are <laughs> we'll probably play with him later, and I'll give him oh, yeah. hardcore him advice flame. in game. The flame, the flame. Feelings on the pro scene and what it means to have a decent macro, Cody. Feelings on what it means to have a decent macro. And what do you feel? What do you feel the current macro is in the pro scene? Like, okay, define what you mean by that. Like, you remember when uh, people would like gang gang up top or bot, and they would like race. For race turrets what do you feel about the current that. yeah what do you feel about the current macro on the pro scene and how do you how would you uh, improve your macro the current macro i would have to say it revolves around rotations whoever rotates fastest is going to win the game like if you have a team that rotates from mid mid inhib and then immediately goes bot lane to take those turrets and then takes dragon. That's like the ideal team you want. But if you have a team that takes mid turret and then just flounders about in the jungle for like half an hour for no reason, probably not going to get much done. True. So how would you improve Will's macro? William is the kind of guy to uh, mess up his clears. What? He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. The jungle he's usually what? level. He's usually level three by the time the jungler's enemy jungle's level five on a Moo. Damn, dude, I'm not that bad. Jesus Christ! How would you improve? Well, his macro? it's all about what really. Happens. He's not winning the micro. <laughs> what really you need to work on is just. Honestly, map awareness. If you can just pay attention to map, like if you see your mid laner pushed up, if your mid laner is pushed up level three, and say they have a Twitch jungle, I don't know why they would have a Twitch jungle. It's just clears are terrible. I hate the clears. All right, can you can say they have a Twitch jungle and your mid laner is just pushed to fucking hell. Like they're practically under the turret, just basking in its glory. What you would say to yourself is, hey. If I was the enemy jungler, I would gank that fucking lane and get a kill right now. So then you camp around mid until your mid laner is, you know, a bit less pushed up. And usually, you'll catch the enemy twitch in the middle of a gank because yeah. it's a prime time to gank. See, what I would do in that situation is I would just help them push the tower. And then the, the twitch would have to 2v1 us. But that's like a difference of opinion, really. Well, no, it's not time. Yeah, that's a waste of time. You could be just farming jungle. Unless they're playing Graves. I'll I'll say that. Unless you're playing Graves, who has amazing jungle... Or not jungle. Just wave clear in general. Like, that's what you want. Wave, wave push. Wait, I, I suggest wanna, wave push. You want to, like, balance out this shit, dude. You want to, instead of wasting your time inside the lane, where you're giving yourself vision, where, like, you're showing yourself to the enemy team, you want to be proactive and uh, get yeah, get shit done while you're not seen. Yeah, like you can be taking scuttle, you can be just waiting in the bush, make sure the bush isn't warded, buy sweepers, do all everything. Yeah. All right, that's some good tips to give my boosted friend here some uh, your boosted your friend. macro. I'm not Thoughts on how to improve the support role for more engagement, Cody. All right, you're a support man. I am not. How to get these fucking garbage, shitter ass support players <laughs> out of my rank games? Oh Let man, I, I we played that those games in every single game that I played. We pretty sure you had the worst support NA. Yep. Oh man. All right. So it needs to happen with support. The easiest way to get better at support is to learn ADCs. It sounds so dumb and retarded. If you can learn how to play ADCs, you'll they want to engage on. Like a gym will 
people want to engage on something completely different than what a Caitlyn wants to engage on. Mm -hmm. Like, Kate, Jen will be like, oh, I'll go in when, like, we can engage on them. Caitlyn's like, I want to engage when they engage on us. So what needs to happen is every support out there, if you want to be good at support, you play ADCs. You play your support, and you play ADCs, and you learn how an ADC wants to engage, how they disengage, what they're expecting from different supports. Mm -hmm. That's how you learn. And Dilution wants to go in whenever their CC is on cooldown. Yeah, exactly. So like you, if, as a, if a support player is is playing up, baiting out the CC from the other team, then Dilution can go in and not get CC'd. Exactly, because Dilution is all about like just moving fast, dancing around your opponent as you get your passive off, and to keep getting your E. Zaya, I feel like Zaya is an interesting AD carry. Because she can go both ways. She can engage and she can dis disengage. Right? Yes. So I feel like with Zaya, you want to get the third feather out there. And then your your uh, support goes in, lines it up perfectly with you, and then you can snare them with your feathers. Right. But like, most supports out there, they want to make the big dick plays. You don't always have to Which is wrong. Big dick exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you're playing thresh sure you could flash hook somebody or flash play or you could just wait a couple seconds and then uh there's no reason to just burn summoners make your adc burn heal for no reason mm -hmm. and if you are playing thresh don't play thresh in my games don't play what don't play thresh in my games cody Oh, Did my thresh? Oh, yeah, it's because I fuck her up. <laughs> can't right. even, can't even flame how do you How do you feel? Because, like, the support role is, does not have a lot of players currently lining up to select support in their role. How do you feel like Riot can engage engage players to become support mains? Um, I feel like if they made better, like, <clears throat> I would say just don't like in LCS, they focus on like the ADCs or the mid laners or the junglers or the top laners. Only a few games do they go like, oh wow, the support play. Oh man, look at that support game. No, they're always like, good job, double lift for landing that Jin snipe or that Jin W when like the the Rakan landed his entire kit. Or like the Lulu's over there focusing like shields on the perfect people and ulting at the right time. And all that so other you stuff. feel like in LCS they can give more. In LCS, they need to romanticize being a support player. What do you more. think they can do other than LCS? Because I know that they're trying to improve it with quests and stuff. Did you see the quest on my support? I did. What do you feel on that? Uh, hmm. Well, I feel like that's just like something to try to get people to this. And I, I feel like that's actually being more proactive in lane. Like, if you're playing a Sona and you have spell thieves, it's an incentive to actually go out there and land your yeah, Q yeah. auto. Yeah. But for the most part, I think they just need to make support look better. Like, Cody, if you can, can you get closer to the mic? Yes, I can. Okay. Because you're cutting out weirdly. No, I was just, I was getting a drink. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. Got that parched throat. But, uh, they just, like, what, like right now, if you look at the home screen, here's putting a good example. You see Riven and Yasuo. How cool do they look? So cool. They look like you want to play those champions, don't you? Oh, yeah. You want to buy oh, yeah. those skins, you want to play those. Name the last time you, you you saw a support champion look as cool as these. Never. Never. I've never seen a good support Rakan. skin. What'd you say? Rakan. That's about it. Rakan looks good. Rakan cool. looked good because him and Zaya looked good. Yeah. Zaya looked Zaya good, looked making Rakan look good. <laughs> they need to just brighten up the support role in general. 
like yeah, right I now it's, like, there's just like... basic metas like it's either you play tank or you play poke there's there's oh, really wow. nothing else even the playmaking supports like bard they're not really that important this season Mm-hmm. And they're not really like focusing on support either. No. Like they everything now support role is for e girls. <laughs> Wait a second. What are you What are you saying? I'm saying you're a fucking e girl, Cody. Oh no. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yeah. Nah, but I you feel like, like, like yeah. overall, I have, I have no engagement and no interest to play support at all. And I'm in the bot lane. Because it doesn't feel like you're doing much. Like, everybody, exactly, you, know, exactly. you don't get pentakills as support. You don't get acknowledged as support. When the when the enemy, when the when your ally Twitch gets a pentakill, you're sitting over here like, I made that happen. And the enemy's just like, good job, Twitch. Wow, that Twitch is so good. Like, you're over here at 0, 0, and 28, and Twitch has, like, 9 deaths because he's so ballsy. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot. Some good points, I hope so. Um, any uh, any uh, tips for the support players out there? Just know the limits to your champion and know the limit to your ADC. Because like a, a list of early game versus a Drake. Sure, you might be playing Thresh and you land the hook, you land the flay, you ignite them. But then you realize that your Callista gets all of her health down to zero in about two seconds because it's against the Draven. You got to not do that. You got to wait till she gets some items. You got to understand the strengths of everything bot lane. All right. All right. Any warding Any tips? tips? Warding? <laughs> if you have wards in your in your inventory and there's not a ward on the dragon and it's an infernal dragon you're you're doing wrong like you want wards your wards to always be on the map at all times and space it out don't like say you have sight stone don't just put all three of your wards down at one time you gotta you gotta put like two down in good positions to see what's going on in the map and you gotta keep one for later and never back with a full sight stone yeah, if you're if you're backing, you might as well place or down where you're backing if you're in the jungle. Like mm. God forbid something happens there and we don't have vision. True. Okay, okay Cody. Uh, uh, any uh, uh, do you feel do you like feel they like should, they should invent, invent maybe some maybe another so support, like, a like a trinket for support? Support. Hmm. I feel like there's not much else they can do for Trinket. I feel like they should just make different support items. Like, Redemption is good and all. But they they need more, like, even now, how many supports do you know that actually build Mikhail's Crucible, even though it's a, it's a free QSS? None. It's, no it's a cheap item. Yeah, nobody knows how to use it. They'll use it on you, like in the middle of a team fight, and you're like, "Wait a minute, I just, I just, got, moving I just got moving to you. What happened?" Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's some good insight. Riot's Riot fucking over fucking the uh, yeah. player base. Support player base pretty hard. Dude, it's all about the e girls. Am I right? Oh yeah. The Sona Claus. Ooh. Ooh, all right. All right. Is on a proper on a proper mode, mode. And would it actually actually improve your, your player? play? William, are you here? We're hearing, We're hearing the echoing again. Yeah. yeah. I shall push the talk. How do I? Party, party, uh, party, uh, party, party, settings. settings. Right. No, 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 no. Voice. And then you go to voice. And then you go to uh, input device. Or, I did uh, it. You see input mode. I get it. Alright, Cody. I'm a boss. Okay, so... Sorry, Sorry. stream. Cody's a little autistic. He didn't know how to use push to talk and he doesn't have a proper mic. Hey, it's me. Okay, folks. For, for improving play, and what else did you say? How to improve your mentality. This is a good question for Will. 
Is is Will, Will a uh, tilting player? Will it's so tilted easily. Okay, this okay. is coming from the guy who gets tilted every fucking game he plays where he doesn't win. I don't get tilted easily, but I, I think do Will's tilted right now when I get tilted because I know Will playing is on tilt right is now. pointless. Tilted at the moment. All right, so, so Cody, uh, feelings on the problem? Thing. I've been playing for about five years. How many years? Six years? Jesus Christ. The easiest thing that I found out, play with toxic people. Just just play with toxic people. You'll start being a toxic person, but you'll start giving less shits about other toxic people. And like, sure, you'll go against an enemy, they'll shit talk you, you'll shit talk them back, and then, uh, then they'll pull up your stats and they'll be like, wow, 47% win rate on this champion? God, you're bad. You just got to take it and be like, yep, I suck at that champion. Just accept it. You got to you gotta not let things affect you. I don't know how else to play with toxic people. You'll become toxic, but you'll stop care. You'll start caring less. That's a good, that's some good pointers there for William. And that's why, that's why Ben plays with me now. That's right. We're toxic to each other almost daily, but we both know we're both screwing around, and uh, I think you've gotten a lot less tilted than you used to be. I mean, I think you, make sure you push the talkies off, by the way. Make sure you're uh, on top of that. What? All right, so I used to be pretty bad. I think Will can back me up on that. Yeah. I used to be really bad. I would rage at Will, too, because he's god-awful. You were pretty bad at that game that we played together. <laughs> Our first game when you were on the enemy team. Oh, you yeah, got oh, outplayed yeah, by flashing into an ash, getting ulted under turret, and then dying when she was like one shot. I was trolling. You were playing Jin, you were not trolling. We had the troll team of support that jungled for half the, half the game. Yeah, but I did shit on your ye. Our AD, our AD was nine and one. I shit on your Ye. Our Ye? That's because our Ye was level twenty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I will come back me up. I mean, I have been pretty toxic to you, Will. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sorry for it. <laughs> I don't but like I will playing say, league with you because of it. I will say this, Will. I have made you a better player. No response. Anyway, another question for Will. Um, what does it actually mean to improve your play, Cody? I think you said that's another question for me. Yeah, you said. Because this is to help you. Okay. What does your play? What does it mean to actually become a better player? Just gotta. Hmm. So, like, most people in bronze, they play. The only people that climb are the ones that accept that they're bad and want to improve. The ones that stay bronze are the ones that are like, I don't deserve this. I should already be out of this, blah, 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 blah. But no, you do deserve it. There's a reason you're there in the first place. Uh, silver, it's like mechanics are getting better, but people need to focus how to farm because we'll see like the Akali mid with four kills, zero deaths, but she has like 20 farm, 17 minutes into the game for no reason. And then she just starts dying and you're like, wait a second, I thought I was ahead. No, you're not ahead. It's all about farming. If you can farm, if you can learn mechanics on champions, if you can get better at certain champions of like, hey, I want to play Jar game and next game I want to play in Italy. Just be like, hey, I want to play Jarvan this game, I want to play Jarvan for the next four games. Play another 80 bruiser one-shot jungler. Cody, what is it? Tighten up how your do you know, How do you know that you've improved, Cody? How do you know that you have taken your game up to the next level and you're no longer that shitter support that misses Mikhail's? How do you how know? <laughs> you know your MMR becomes good. Like, you you might be losing games, be doing good each game. 
and then eventually you'll just start climbing like there's really no other way to say it like at some point or another you'll start just straight up climbing you'll be like bronze one and next thing you know you're silver two promos into silver one because you skipped over silver five and silver four because you just started playing amazing you're getting like 20 lp per game you're not making as many mistakes you're actually playing team fights as well as you can like you'll know when you start doing better because you'll feel it you'll be in the middle of a fight and then the fight will be over and like you and your adc are the only ones left alive and you'll just sit there and tell yourself, I played that perfectly. That's when you know that you've improved. Mm-hmm. Also, when you start building fucking McHale's on goddamn AP support champion, because I swear to God, if you're playing Lulu and you do not have a McHale's, <laughs> Kill yourself. stop playing the game. <laughs> just stop playing the game. All right. How do you feel a jungler? How do you feel you know that you're improving as a jungle? All right. So what I did, because I went on a little stretch of playing only graves on one of my accounts. Literally, all I played was graves. In the past 40 games, it was just graves. The way that I realized I was doing better at jungling, because I, I suck at jungle. I suck at jungle almost as much as I suck at top lane. I found out I was doing better when I started, like, first blood participation. I was either getting first blood or giving first blood over to a laner, like, almost every single game. Because when you're jungling, you need map awareness. And map awareness is like, hey, they have a Sejuani. She's going to start blue buff, and then ideally she'll just jungle and then gank top or mid. So you'll be like prepared for that because you see your mid laner pushed up. You'll be like, hey, I'm going to go wait in this bush, catch her in the middle of a gank, help my mid laner not die. Bam. You just got to... You got to not make like the early dives. Like people will be like, hey, I'm playing Master Yi. They have a kill top. She has like no health. I'm going to go dive her. And you dive her and then you die and you're just sitting there like, wait a minute. What just happened? Mm-hmm. What is a good way to measure your farm as a jungler? Measure your farm. Try to keep pace with the lowest person on your team. As long as like the lowest person on your team is in a two farm Nautilus top lane against a Trinomir. Whoever on your team has like the lowest farm, try to keep pace with them. What you want to do ideally is keep pace with the enemy jungler, but you won't always see them like. You won't always see their farm, and sometimes they'll have laning farm as well. So what you want to do is just make sure that your jungle's cleared, and when you're ganking, don't like be like, oh, I have to take this gromp first, or else I'll be behind. No, you got to go gank at ideal times. You got to farm at the right times. You got to pay attention to everything that's going on in the game. Those are some good uh, words of advice, Will. (laughs) <laughs> Willie, your no mic is muted. muted. No flame. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm always muted. Okay. Well, okay. If you want to climb, just play Graves. Play nothing but Graves. I found out by playing all the champions, Elise and Graves, hardest jungle carries that you could possibly play. I can play Elise. Can you play Elise well? Yes. Because I, I can play Irelia, but... Whew. I'd say Will's at least is spicy. Did you hear all he said about the farm, Will? Yes. Okay. Keep pace with the lowest. Keep, keep pace with either the enemy jungler or the lowest person on your team. Do you have any advice for kiting uh, jungle creeps? Not on graves. Not on graves? Oh, man. Like, Gromp nowadays is the easiest to kite because it autos fast in the beginning, but after, like, three autos, it slows down advantage to like kite around it and like move out a range of its auto and make it walk to you when it has the slower autos because that's easiest and you can like it buys you time to use your abilities like if you're taking blue buff and you're playing elise you burn everything in the first like two seconds 
and then you're just sitting there autoing it. So like you do that and then just auto it and like back away from it, make it work to you. That way you can reset your cooldowns, like just wait your cooldown so you can burst it again without taking as much damage. And there's a uh, there's an interesting tether range for the aggro. Every creep will has an aggro. So you play around the aggro range and then you uh, reset your cooldowns. Right, because if you go out of that aggro, it'll be like, hey, I don't care about you anymore. And it'll reset and it'll go back to its original spot. Yep. It takes a little bit of getting used to it, but I feel like you can pull it off. Anyway, um, off of the subject of how bad Will is, and onto the subject of do you actually enjoy playing League of Legends? This might be a question for Will as well. Do you actually Gosh. enjoy playing League of Legends, and will you continue to play the game? At the moment, like, I've reached my peak elo. I know I'll never be better than Masters, because my mechanics aren't good enough for Challenger. I peaked at Masters. I'm Diamond Platinum now. Um, I'll probably keep playing, because I do enjoy the game. I enjoy the competitive. I enjoy the champions. I enjoy knowing a lot about the champions and like knowing how to play each one. Um, most of my friends play League. I guess you're one of those people now. Am I? Am I included, included in that group? You you are now. You can be included in my friend group. <laughs> but yeah, I believe unless they do something really stupid to League, like just taking away certain champions, which they probably will never do, being as, you know, reworks. Uh, I think I'll just continue to play. What about you? Well, I don't really enjoy it anymore. I feel burnt out. I used to play hard, and I used to really, like, give a shit about my rank, and now I just play troll picks and have a good time. Define troll picks. Leona jungle. I love Listen, Leona jungle going AD. The, the ganking abilities of Leona jungle are pretty good. Yeah, she is pretty good at ganking. William, do you think you'll ever reach your former gold glory again? I think if I put my mind to it and really cared and spammed games, I could hit gold in a week. But you don't. Is there any way that League of Legends can reignite that kindle, the fire, the growth? in your pants i think they need to take a month or two where instead of focusing on making new champions to sell skins they focus on balancing the game because i want to play champions that i like i don't want to have to play characters that are busted i don't want i don't they want are to have to play that. to play graves to climb i want to you don't skins. want to have to go into the meta is what you're saying you don't yeah. want there to be a meta I want there to be sure I want there should be strong champions but I want every champion to have a chance like I want fiddlesticks to be good again they changed fear and ruined him and when they changed fear and ruined him I couldn't play him anymore in ranked and it was the saddest thing ever because I used to kick ass with fiddlesticks I used to get pentas all the time with fiddle and now nothing nothing it's just sad it's just sad. sad. I agree. That is sad to hear. I'm not sad. I hate Phil Six. Change back fear. Change back <laughs> fear. 2015. I'm starting a revolution. You say well, yeah, they are doing that, though. They're reworking masteries and runes. They don't have runes anymore. They don't have runes anymore? No. Well, they're reworking good. it. Here's the thing, Will. The... League of Legends is a big game, right? And um, there's always going to be a meta. You can't change that. I know. What you can do is stop being a little pussy bitch and play some League with me. Uh, that can change. You can also play League with me. I'd rather play PUBG, but I'm deep. I'd be down for League right now. Alright. On to the next question. 
Oh, wait, you didn't answer if you're going to continue playing League. Oh, wait, maybe you did. I uh, you did. Did you enjoy the current missions in League, and do you think Riot should release more in events, like, with premises like the current one and the GP one? I believe missions are good. Like, right now, all you get is tokens. It's The, the tokens are pretty nice. Uh, I feel like they should there's not much they can do with that because like what are they going to do do a mission skin they're just going to like give you icons and give you little doodads maybe like a few points of rp or a, a rune page or something here and there but like at that point it's not really that worth it i feel like they need to find something that they can actually put in there that's worthwhile to people because, like, if they put a mission and it's, like, play GP and do this and you get this icon, most people are going to look at it and be like, I don't really care for that icon. Why would I ever do this? And they'll just disregard it. Like, they need to make it to where it's something that everybody wants. So, skins. Well, they do that, then RP is kind of pointless. Like, yeah. You can just get skins during missions. They need to. They need to add something new. That's what I'm saying. They need to find something new and add it to the game. What if it was just like win a hundred ranked games with this character during this skin? Then it actually takes time to do it. Okay, yeah. If it was like win a hundred ranked games and you get like a 975 skin, that would make some sense. Yeah. Okay. Unless you're in challenger, in that case, you're fucked. <laughs> Do you enjoy our okay? So we're gonna talk about the uh, Master UKL top and the Chinese, like the Chinese boosting. Jesus strategy. Christ! Do you um? <laughs> did you like it? <laughs> I was. How many? What's that? How many times did we play that? Like eight times in a row. We did it eight times, and we won. Once... Five out of the three times we did it. No, I think we won six out of the eight times. And one of those we had an AFK, and the other one we kind of just pulled around. Yeah. The other times, I legitimately went like 20 and 2 as Master Yi. And we would get take Baron at like 20 minutes exactly. Like, we would be sitting there we waiting for Baron to spawn. Game. We did that every single game, even if we were behind. I I I don't know how I feel about it. Like it's good, I like but it's I feel good. like I feel like if the more people that play it, the more it's going to get known, and then Riot's going to do something about Let's, it. Let's uh, tell Will about it. So it's a Kale top, and it's a Master Yi jungle Will. Yeah. And the Kale, she starts off with like two mana crystal things. The mana regrowth, and she gets an Athene's first item. Athene's when you heal someone, it gives them attack speed at, um, for six seconds. Holy so what you do is, as soon as you get Athene's, and then the master you gets, uh, oh yeah, Iron Sensor. As soon as you get Iron Sensor, and then the master you gets uh, his attack speed item from the jungle. Well, you, go, you both go top lane, and you dive top tower. It's a kill every single time. It has worked every time, eight eight games in a row, even the ones that we lost, if we really? dive the top laner no matter what. And then you take Rift Herald, and then you get the Rift Herald buff, and you just destroy the towers. So you get two towers down by 15 minutes. And if the only, the only counterplay is if they if the enemy team sends like everybody to you because at this point you can two v three. Yeah. As long as Kale stays in the back with that wind speakers and ardent, and Master Yi presses ult and gets like two point oh attack speed, and then just starts life stealing off of everybody. Like they have to send more people, and if that happens, your your team can just like be like, hey, we have nobody down here, so let's just push these. And then you can solo Baron, just the two of you, at 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes, and nobody expects that. Nobody's going to ward Baron at 20 minutes, because, like, who the hell is actually going to two-man Baron? If you see it, the enemy ADC and the enemy mid laner in their lanes, 
and you don't see the enemy jungler in top laner, you don't automatically assume, hey, they're at Baron. So, yeah, I mean, it's a fucking dirty strategy. Credit to where it's due, though. We did not come up with this. The Chinese did. Chinese diamond to master boosting strategy. What was it? 80% win rate in 80, Chinese solo queue? Duo queue? I think it was like 85% win rate. That's fucking kid. retarded. It works. It works every time we play a game. And we just dominated. Like, our team was trash. We had, like, this trash ass Talia who couldn't. Oh, I'll play, man. He was the poor man. Huh? That remember, I remember the Talia dude. He was uh, oh. our guy. Oh, yeah. Taco Cat. Taco Cat was garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I got a Penta against him, too. So, <laughs> on that Jin clip that I sent you, it was me against him in custom games. Of course it was. All right. Um. Our uh, our final question for Cody here is: um, You've played Overwatch, right, Cody? Yes, I actually own the game Overwatch. Can you guess what I mean on Overwatch? Soldier. No, I I mean two champions, and it's reminiscent to League of Legends. Mercy and Iona. Mercy and Roadhog. <laughs> Roadhog has the hooks just like Thresh. Mercy's support. Do you think that Overwatch is even a game anymore, Cody? I think it's fallen off of popularity in the past few months, actually. I don't know why, because I'm not getting into Overwatch. It. Exactly. There's too many people that are just like, why would I play that when I can just play CSGO or League of Legends? And then on top of that, there's free games out there that are just like Overwatch. Just play Paladins. Mm -hmm. like, Paladins is actually really fun. Yeah, Paladins is actually really good. I enjoy that. We should play Paladins together sometime, buddy. Yeah, we should. Can what is the what deal I... with uh, Blizzard's balance team? They have not made any significant balance. Like, here's the thing. Like, even if you take Overwatch seriously... It's going to be the same games. There's going to be the same strats. Oh, you yeah. Complain, no, once you... You, complain that, uh, you complain that League of Legends is stale and they don't change anything well. Overwatch hasn't changed anything since it came Overwatch out. Overwatch is actually worse. Like, Overwatch has... You have certain team comps. You, if you're pushing and attacking, you get, like, a Lucio. Lucio. And you get, like, all these other... The other champions, like... Widowmaker, Reaper. You get all the pushing champions, soldiers, stuff like that. And then if you're defending, you just get a Torbjorn, and Torbjorn just sits there doing all that he needs to do. Ben. Hold on, dude. We're doing a podcast. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, Torbjorn is <laughs> fucking stupid. He's so funny. Like, why isn't that character even alive? It's a waste of space. So, Wait. like, I mean, overall, Overwatch, like, the Overwatch team needs to get some balls, honestly. Like, they can't keep, uh... They just need a balance. Yeah, I mean, Soldier has been meta for, like, way too long. And, like, like, the, like it's just retarded. Yeah. Moving on <clears throat> to the debate segment. Do you want to do the debate segment? Fuck yeah, I do. Fuck yeah. I know what All I right. want to play play as in this one. Alright, let so, me just look at the debate segment real quick. Do you know what lobbyism is, Brent, uh, Ben? Um, yeah, it's where the um, the presidential candidates lobby to companies to, to, uh, yeah. to get them to get voted in. Cody, do you want to take, do you want to be on the debate or do you want to be the judge? Oh man, I don't even know if I know any of these. Like, what what's going on? Basically, um, this is the debate segment of the podcast, and the um, and during this segment, we uh, we go head to head, and me and Will, and you just and the guest decides which one of us has a more compelling argument. There's two sides okay. to the debate. There's two sides to a debate. Cody, 
And we're going to, well, I think that me and Will are just going to do the quick ones. We're going to do one introduction. We're going to state our per, our thing, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to do a point. And then we're going to do a counterpoint. And then we'll conclude. All right. So I, so I think you'll be judging us on this. Okay. okay well, so, yep. Yeah. I think it's perfect that I don't know this the argument that well. Yeah. So I yeah, don't already have a, an opinion. Why. Yeah, it makes you unbiased, which is good. So I want to be on the side of a censorship is a detriment to artists, Ben. Okay. I'll. I mean, I'll take devil's advocate for sure. I mean, I don't, I don't really care. Okay. So well, I'm just uh, let me first. know when to start. You're gonna go first. Um, yeah. I'm gonna get the timer ready. Just let me do that real quick, Will. Yep. We're go we did we put on a minute. Yeah, minutes. A here. minute for every uh, a minute for every uh, one of these. So we the do stop. our point, our introduction, and our point, and then we switch sides. Do our point introduction, and then we do uh, counterpoints to counter well, the other person. We introduce. We come in with a good statement. Then we do the point, another point, then conclude. Okay. All right. Well, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Timer starting now. Is censorship a detriment to artists? Of course it is. How many comedians have you guys heard about being banned from colleges because they're not allowed to say what they want? It's obviously a sense. It's obvious censorship, and it's because of the leftist ideologies that are happening to artists nowadays. It's starting with comedy. It's happened to video games because apparently video games aren't equal enough. Even though Overwatch has a very vast amount of care, like diversity of characters, doesn't matter to these people. They still think that video games are sexist or whatever. Um, that's all I really need. That's all the time I need. I mean, to stop the timer. You had ten seconds left. All right, I'm stopping you. Are you ready for mine? Yeah. All right, just let me look at the topic. All right. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. I'm gonna go three, two, one. All right, well, first off, my uh, co-host here doesn't know how to fucking introduce himself. My name is William, uh, my name is Ben. <laughs> and, you don't um, either. I guess not. <laughs> My name is Ben, and I'm on the side that censorship is not a detriment to artists, and here's why. Okay, um, artists in the media are um, role models for the youth. They do not. They um, they act certain ways that are copied by young ones, right? And we don't want our future generations to be running around saying. Um, we gonna get that money, or uh, wow. I, just, I just fucked up, bitch, last night. Like, no, like we want our future generation to be intelligent and to have free um, freedom of mind and speech, but to a certain degree that isn't detrimental to um, society. That's the end of my point. Exactly one minute. Are you ready for your counterpoint, uh, for your uh, points now, Will? Yes, my counterpoint. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Yeah, see, that's, that's the thing. Art shouldn't be limited in any way at all, period. Art is about freedom of everything. It's about, you know, I can draw a fucked up thing and not have to worry about how it's going to be affected. Like I shouldn't, I should be able to draw what is much of the goriest thing possible and it should still be allowed. That's why art exists. Art exists as, as a way of expressing itself. It's for the minds, for the freakers and the, you know, the freakers. It's for the, the, like, it's for the people who don't feel like they have a voice. And that's why I think that you shouldn't be able to just decide whether or not something is appropriate. It's not appropriate. 
for children. Well, sure, children shouldn't be uh, subjugated or shown certain things, but Two. art should also not be limited. One. Anyway. Done. Yeah, you went over time there, buddy. That's Do you want me to tell you five seconds ahead of time? Yes. All right, next one I will. Are you ready? For my what? Um, are you ready for my point? Yeah. Censorship is not specifically onto the uh, method of of, uh, of expression that the artists use. Censorship is used by the media to help put out the image that the artist wants to um, exude and then um, put it in a more of a PC sort of way. You don't want um, like this rap music to be blared on the radios and to have young kids listen to it and and like have all the swear words in it and then go to their schools and start cussing out their friends. Like that's not how society should work. That's not how society is built up to work. And that's not how society it should uh, advance throughout the years. And all right, well, your second point. Okay, so this is the final point. This is the final point. Okay. Ready? Yep. Final okay. point. Go. Okay. Well, this point is that censorship is pointless. Trying to censor an artist is never going to work because as much as you sh try to take away a child's ability to listen to a, a piece of art, it's going to make them, it's going to make them want it more. Like, you shouldn't be showing kids porn or anything, but eventually the kid's going to find out. Like, he's going to figure it out. He's not an idiot, and he should be respected as such. It's, half a minute. It doesn't... It, I don't even need half a minute to say this. Everyone is going to find out the fucked up shit that this world has to offer. 15 seconds. And I would rather them find out sooner. And that's all I need. That's all the time I need. That's it? Yeah. You're ending? All right, my final point. Centr uh, censorship is beneficial to society, and I'm gonna tell you why, all right? Just look at how the media portrayed, portrays the president, right? Do you think that uh, the president of the United States should be on Twitter saying ka fee fee at like four o'clock in the morning? No, that's retarded. All right. If uh, Donald Trump is being censored, then we wouldn't ha be looking, or the United States wouldn't be looking like the dumbasses that they are. Censorship is useful um, because it helps artists express themselves in a clean fashion. You don't need to have the swear words in your songs to get your point across that the police are fucked up. All right. Like you can say that without like having to say fuck the police that's my end point okay. William are you ready for your conclusion this is where you backstab the shit out of me you ready okay I'm gonna start in three two one go okay Ben's a fucking retard um If you really think that certain people should be censored just because of what they want to say, then that's anti-free speech. That's anti-anything. Like, you shouldn't... You, everyone has the right to say exactly what they want. It doesn't mean that you can say exactly what you want without con uh, without uh, consequence. There's consequences to your actions, and that includes your words. But it doesn't mean that you should be stopped from saying them. Like, that whole punch a Nazi in the face debacle... No, don't punch Nazis in the face. Ignore them and they'll go away. Because Nazis aren't killing Jews anymore. It's not this. It's not the same thing. They just have. They just hold stupid opinions. That's all they hold. If you talk to them and try and convince them to not be a Nazi, that's Ten probably seconds. a better way of doing going about it. And yeah. Five seconds. Violence stop? is not the answer. There we go. 
That's all I need. Censorship I'm isn't right now. William, if censorship was in play, then violence wouldn't be a thing to even consider. Punch a Nazi wouldn't even be a thing. Like, if you think about it, all the conflict revolving around Donald Trump would be completely erased if he had just had some people telling him how to get his message across appropriately for the masses. If you think about all the dumb shit that Donald Trump has said and all the dumb shit that some artists say on a daily basis, it's no wonder that they like they are they are getting talked about so much on the on like news websites. It's it's like it's obvious that they're just being media whores, right? Like the main point to um, expression is to express. An idea and you can express that idea without being a complete dickhead end point exactly one minute by the way Cody um we get points for staying on time limit and being exactly on time limit so uh, Cody you're going to uh, judge us now and you're gonna say who had the more compelling argument you can go over everything we said all right. Decisions. So, let's see. So, I can agree with both sides. If there was censorship, that's what happening. Killings, a lot of it's done, like, because of media. Like, like oh, I saw this on a video once, I want to try it, and then they go out and, like, kill their younger brother because they're fucked up. So I can agree with that, but I can also agree with what Will said. Who had more now, points. Every, more points. Who had more points? You. Nah, I won. Nah, I won. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. For that. You made the you made a better argument. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. You kept pulling up like you you went the American route of free speech. Yeah. We're both yeah. Canadian, by the way. That's even worse. <laughs> so Cody agrees that I won. Which is weird because I honestly I agree more with Will on that stance, but you made a bad argument. So if I if I was judging this just this, like no prior knowledge, I would be siding with you. Okay. Absolutely. And I also believe in Will's point, but he fucking retarded and doesn't know how to debate shit. I had a hard time illustrating my points. I have a hard <laughs> time speaking to people. I'm bad like that. Alright. So clearly I'm the intellectual here. Next we move on to the Shut next the point. fuck up. Then Jasmine <laughs> was watching the the cast. Yeah, Jasmine yeah, was watching the cast. cast. I sent her the link. She agreed that I am now washed up. <laughs> so Which is funny because she's about to get demoted. <laughs> now we're moving this... on to is lobbyism inherently corrupt? Do you want to be on the side of the devil advocate? Because I spanked your ass last time. Sure, I'll go on the side of lobbyism is inherently corrupt. No, the devil's advocate, so, like, you'd be against it. You'd say that lobbyism isn't inherently, inherently corrupt. Gotta make a shout-out to Uncle Josh. You rock, Uncle Josh. Keep doing Uncle you. Josh. So, uh... <laughs> Josh, no! <laughs> um, so, wait, which one... Which, so what what side are we doing, Will? So I'm going to be on the side that lobbyism is inherently corrupt. All right, so I'm again, so I'm devil's advocate again. You, you're devil's advocate again? I thought, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think you'd hold that opinion. Okay. I mean, I'm fine with it. Cody's probably going to side with me again because you can't speak to save your ass. All right. I'm ready to start whenever. 
Remember, Cody. I uh, remember, Cody. It's um, whoever's <coughs> whoever you thought went. Right. Yeah. Just like last time. Okay. William, do you want to start? Sure. Make sure you actually introduce yourself this time. Remember, this is formal. Yes, I'm very bad at being formal. Yeah. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Let's go. So I'm Will, and I hold the opinion that lobbyism is inherently corrupt, mostly because of its effects on our society at large today. Lobbyism has caused numerous companies to get laws in that have that have just got given them lots and lots of revenue for no reason. It's allowed companies to fuck our climate and allow for well a lot of bad shit to happen. Like it shouldn't be a thing, I don't think. And that's all I need, that's all I need. Fifteen seconds left. Really? Like you get points you get like Cody's gonna take this in, dude. You get fifteen seconds left, whatever dude. Alright. <sighs> you gotten rusty at this, Will. Well, we haven't been doing the podcast for We'll do it long. more often. Yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. Are you ready, Cody? Always ready. I'm just going to refresh the stream here. Get this stupid chat out of my face. All right. I'm going to start now. All right, so I'm Ben, and uh, what is in politics with a little money? Am I right, guys? Money makes the world go round. Politics is the world. So why wouldn't you have your eggs in the basket? You know what I mean? If you're a company and you want to do good for the world, obviously you're going to support Hillary. If you're a company and you want to do bad for the world, obviously your name is Saudi Arabia and uh, you support Trump. So, I mean... Like, let's look at last election, right? Trump won by defacing Hillary, who has all the backing of all the companies, right? How did that happen? Hillary's a fucking idiot, and she's sick in the head. But let's not get too much into that. All in all, lobbyism, super good for politics. Let's be real, folks. And exactly one minute. Are you ready, Will? Yeah, for my counterpoint? No, you're, yeah, this is, well, these are not counterpoints, they're just points. Are you ready, Will? Yeah. And three, two, one, go. Okay, so you said that money and politics should be together. I hold the exact opposite opinion. It shouldn't be together. Politics should not be affected by how much money we can get in a politician's pocket. There shouldn't be foundations that can just make money for a politician no matter what. Even though it's a foundation, it should be like doing the opposite. Even even the great Bernie Sanders was corrupt apparently and gained a, a, a jet off of a deal. And which that saddens me to my core. 40 seconds. I believe that I believe that still this sh oh, fuck 5 seconds lobbyism is shit and it should be dead Lob <laughs> fuck lobbyism, lobbyism. <laughs> all right one minute congratulations on getting a minute for the first time well but you uh <laughs> it was absolute garbage. I don't I don't, I don't really I don't need know. a good point to illustrate this point <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to go now. Right, so lobbyism is complete garbage. I 100% disagree. How are you, as a runner-up for the presidential election, going to come into this um, multi-million dollar business of politics and you're going to say, I'm going to be completely squeaky free and, uh, free and clean and not going to take any money from anybody? That's wrong. How are you going to get your voice out there? How are you going to be heard? All that comes with money. How are you going to get that money? You're going to speak to companies and they're going to back your campaign. How are you going to get them to back your campaign? You're going to give them a, um, uh, you're going to lobby to them. 
obviously, hence lobbyism. You're going to sit down with them in a meeting in a board, with a board of directors, and you're going to state your uh, the the by uh, the foundation of your um, campaign. You're going to tell them the points, and you're going to even alter some of your points to make your campaign sound even more juicy because you want that cash flow, baby. And exactly 59 minutes and 70 seconds. Round that up. That's a minute. Are you ready, Will? Yeah. Are you ready to get destroyed? I mean, I just destroyed you there. Are you ready? Yes. In three, two, one, go. And that's exactly the problem. Our politicians shouldn't be sitting with companies. Our politicians should be sitting with the people. It's not about making money and uh, helping companies. It's about helping the people live their lives to the fullest and not fucking the people directly in the ass for no apparent reason. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie actually tried to do this and did a good job for a while of like being for the people and really get, caring about c civilians as opposed to giant people, giant like companies. But he failed because seconds. of the corrupt, the corrupt voting system that was because there was voter fraud. But besides that point, still, did you even make a point? Fucked. Yeah. I did. <laughs> 58, 59, one minute. All right, well, I mean. You don't always need your full time. Okay. It's like taking candy from a baby, Cody. I thought you liked this uh, topic, Will. I do like this topic. All right. I don't think he does. <laughs> I don't like this debate, but I like this topic. All right, well, are you guys uh, ready for me to end my point here? My last point? And go. Look at someone with a bunch of money, right? Let's take a look back into the past. What just happened? Donald Trump got elected into the the cabinet the president he's the, the the head honcho now apparently right um will you should love trump he did this all by himself apparently but i mean <laughs> you're pretty sure if you look back at the past mr trump here also went to a bunch of companies and got their money i wonder why that is maybe it's because you need to fund your campaign sir Maybe it is because people don't have money for that shit. All in all, if you can't get your voice out, you don't have a platform. You're not going to be elected as president. Lobbyism is the most important thing in politics. And it cannot be done without it. 59.99 seconds. So is it my turn now? No, it's concluded. We're concluding now. Will's going to talk yeah. shit about me. I'm going to talk shit about Will. You have to put all your marbles in one basket. I mean, I kind of did that too, but I mean, I think the Trump thing is another point, and I used my last point to fuck the shit out of Will. Are you ready, Will? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Now you said I should like Trump. Now that's not the case because Trump is just helping other companies that he's affiliated with get more money from politics. And that is just disgusting. It's 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 a conflict of interest. Politicians should be paid a little better. And by that I mean they should be paid a little bit more, but should have no affiliations whatsoever with companies at all. 30 seconds. In order to fund a campaign, you need advertising money, sure. But if they were paid a little bit better, then, you know, then they might be more in inclined 15 to seconds. advertise better. 
you know, they might be more inclined to get people talking about their platform. I, I, Five seconds? I just don't think that they need to be involved with companies. End time. Okay, well. <sighs> Taking candy from my baby. It sucks. Baby Honestly, candy. I think I won this one. You do? Yeah. I think I got this one. You haven't really said anything. Yeah, I have. I said all I needed to. Alright, alright, alright. Let me get, I mean, I'm going to start now. Bam. All right. I mean, like, ladies and gentlemen of the court, you've seen my case. <laughs> Personally, well, not supposed to be personal, but fuck it. Let's go off the records here and say that the system that's in place works for a reason. It's been around more than 50 years. Right? I'm sure even longer for fuck's sakes. Lobbyism is way crucial. And lobbyism along with the media is also crucial. The media fucking helped Donald Trump get into office by saying a bunch of stupid shit about him. The media fucked Hillary over by reporting on all her, her email fraud. Lob without lobbyism, then you just have the media being dickheads and cunts. Like, you can't trust shit from the media. Who do you trust? The actual speeches and rallies that the fucking presidential uh, candidates put in place for the people. And that is put together by lobbyism. One minute. Done. Oh, man. Then you're not going to like me. Fuck you. You're going to say I lost. That last speech made William win. God damn it. You do know presidential speeches are not really made by the presidents. That's just whatever the presidents get from, like, their people yeah. to say in front of the crowds. I have no idea how this... To gain happens. support. I win! I you win! Oh, yeah, but you I lost a, the hell out of the last one. I had, um... I had an idea what to say, that's why it took so long to start. And then and William uh, fucked me because he said something. And then I was thinking about what he said, and I was like, wait, I actually had to... <laughs> To finish my shit. All right. I mean, I won uh, being Denzel's etiquette, so I'm fine with that. Yeah, you did well. You did a good job, man. I think I still think I spoke better than Will, though. That might be the case, but fuck you. All right, Cody. So who is the winner? Are we are we going like based off of both of them? We're going off based off his speech. Like, this speech, the one about lobbyism. We're going off of all of it. Okay, so Will, your first speech was garbage. I could probably get something better from somebody in National Honor Society in high school. <laughs> giving a speech about a third world country that they know nothing about. Okay. <laughs> ben, your second speech... Almost as bad as Will's first speech. That was just the ending, though. No, it was like half mid midway. You uh, you fell off. Yeah. Your mid your mid to late game was bad. <laughs> Who's uh, the overall winner? Overall winner. I'm gonna have to say it's Ben. Fuck. Just because at least his second speech had a good beginning. Your first speech, I didn't know what you were trying to make a point with. Yeah, I was not prepared for this debate. It was completely impromptu. <laughs> oh, no. I was, I was prepared for the last few debates. But this one, I decided to just say fuck it and not be ready. You can say whatever you want. Who won MJK Lover, if you're still watching? You can say whatever you want here. This is a free chat. Unlike Will, who can't say whatever he wants, even if he wants to.
Just no Wait. spam. No spam, really. Wait, is MGK Lover Josh or is that Gideon? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I want to see who they think won. Unless they're not here anymore. Wait a minute. When it says total views, 1,300. <laughs> 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 Anyone near NYC or Newark? No, New Jersey who can hook me up with some good shit? I would say oh, use the internet, my friend. Yeah. Use the internet to its fullest potential. Oh my god. Do you know this person well? No. Alright, cool. <laughs> you feel, I feel you. I feel, I feel you too, buddy. I'm pretty sure we're all high here. Except for me. I'm not high. I vape. That's all you I might do. as well have been high with that first speech. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Fuck was off, that? Jesus. All right. You wanna? You can. We're we're in the we're in the stream here, guys, with the booty talk. There will um, be games after. There will be games after. I feel like we had a good chat with our um. With our uh, master friend here, who isn't masters anymore. But Washed up time. masters player, dude. Riven got me to masters. That's all. I, that's all I'm saying. If you want to climb, play Riven. Oh yeah, I mean, it was a good booty cast. You guys can go back in and in there and watch the vod. I'm pretty sure we might even have this on YouTube. Yeah, if we'll get this shit YouTube. together, if we'll get this shit together, it was a decent stream. Cody's mic is fucked up. If we ever have him on the fucking cast again. I'm gonna buy him a new fucking mic, that's for sure. Hey, I have I push to talk now, baby. That was the problem. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's on. But, uh, yeah. We got some good out information out of our friend Cody here. Um, that's the end of the booty cast. It's me. And everyone, stay, stay slapping. Just stay slapping. Slapping the booty. Stay slapping. Stay slapping that booty, everybody. This is the booty cast signing off. Peace out. Peace.